Right. My name is Earl Hutchinson. I was in the Army. I was drafted. Actually, uh, I was a skinny little rascal, and my eyes were about 2400, which is not very good. So I was in 4F for a while. And finally, I was uh, drafted and, and went to Fort Snelling. But, uh, as far as my war, it was a pretty short one. We'll get to that later. Uh, I'm the youngest of eight boys, born in Lake Crystal, Minnesota. And the reason I'm giving you some background on my family is that my second oldest brother enlisted in the service about 1933, I think. He was a career army man. It was with the 1st Cavalry. The, uh, the one next to him enlisted in the Navy. He was a career Navy man. He ended the war uh, as a skipper of an LST, or running away from a typhoon someplace. I have pictures of his ship up on the Dew Line. He was the engineering officer on the, on the ship up in the, the Dew Line. Uh, the, the next one to him was physically unable to go in the service, but and uh, the next one to him had been in the service and was discharged that was be before the war. And the next one was uh, my brother Howard. He was shot down over Berlin. He was a, 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 a navigator of the B-17. He was shot down over Berlin on the 22nd of May, I believe, the 44. I'll get back to that later, but uh, anyway, uh, I have a background of, of a lot of service people in, in my family. My uh, my oldest brother went into the, he was a, well, like I said, I'm the youngest of eight boys, and my oldest brother was 17, 18 years older than I was, and I never knew him. Of course, when he got through high school, he left home and was gone, and I never really knew him until much later, uh, after the war, when we were both at the university, I guess. But uh, I kind of digress here. I mm -hmm. okay. get a little lost, but uh, back to me, uh, like I say, I was uh, a 4F for a while. I finally was... Uh, Drafted in uh, in 1943, went into the service on uh, in July of 43. Went to Fort Snelling. Went through there and uh, was sent to Camp Dodge, Iowa, outside mm -hmm. of Des Moines. I went through basic training there. A couple of fellows that. People know I was in in uh, basic with Dave Moore, who was a at WCCO radio for many many years. Uh, we were also at the university at the same time when, after the war. But uh, someone that I, that I happen to know when, when you were in when you were in boot camp, where did you go afterwards? Okay, after. <clears throat> After that, we were, I was, a few of us were sent to St. Louis. We were in a medic's outfit. We were stationed in the Continental Building on Grand and Olive, downtown, or uptown, St. Louis. We were one of the best duties I ever had because I was sent out to the St. Louis Ordnance Depot and I would go to work at four o'clock in the afternoon and uh, had a desk and if somebody got hurt or something and came in and then I'd take care of them and send them back to the nurse. They didn't really run any graveyard shifts so at midnight they had a bed back there. I could go to bed and it was at eight o'clock in the morning I was off and I was off for another so I got to go out to see the Cards or the Browns play ball every other day. Wow. So I had, I had a ball, and they shipped me out of there three weeks before the series. Of course, the... Shipped you to where? To Fort, uh, 
uh, Fort Warren, Wyoming. Okay. They, uh, when we were in, uh, in St. Louis, we were billeted in private homes, and I don't remember too much about how that worked as far as pay or anything mm -hmm. like that. But uh, <laughs> I spent a lot of time doing that. Uh, did, you, did you end up overseas any place? Okay, we'll get to that. Okay. Uh, went to Fort Warren uh, in, that would be in, the, in the, I suppose, early October, late September, because it was just before the World Series. And I, uh, I took my, my basic there. I was with a, a service company, a quartermaster service company. Mm. Like I said, I was sore F and uh, was not a, a great soldier. I was a skinny little guy, but I found out that I wasn't so bad after all because we go on hikes and I can remember the guys that are half again as big as I was and I carried their packs and mine too on hikes <laughs> when they couldn't make it. So I, I guess I was pretty good at that shape at that time. But I went from from Fort Warren, I was sent to uh, Camp Kilmer, New Jersey, and from there went to uh, on a limey boat on the I don't know first or second of March. We left and it took I think 13 days because we were in convoy, <clears throat> but. <laughs> Some strange things happened on the on the boat. Where was the convoy going to? To, to England. Okay. And uh, we got uh, <laughs> down in a hole in the hammocks and everything, and a whole hole full of, of GIs sleeping in hammocks. One morning, went up and people were griping about the, getting rousted out and not having that boat drill. I said, what boat drill are you talking about? I slept through the whole thing. You never even knew about it. So finally, I, I couldn't stand it down there. And I got up around, right around the stack, one of the stacks where it was nice and warm when it was fairly decent weather. And I, that's where I slept after that, uh, outside. Anyway, we finally got to England, a station at a a couple different places. I ended up down at Torquay, or actually on, right on the on the Dover Cliffs at Babacombe, which is a, a suburb of Torquay. Torquay is kind of like our Atlantic City. Hmm. It's a resort type of place down there. But it was a, a beautiful place, and as I said before, I was billeted in private home in, in St. Louis. We were billeted in private homes in in uh, Babacombe. Some wonderful people named Lambert, an old elder couple, couple were, of my friend Joey Vansky from Jersey City, big Polish boy, and I uh, lived with them. Well, when we got to the day that we moved up there, it was fog like like England is famous for, <laughs> and didn't know from nothing about the place. And when they dropped us off, they said, "Well, Chow is at the Ardmore Hotel at so, such and such a time," and uh, we had to find our way there <laughs> in, in the fog, which we did finally. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> these Lamberts were just. Such wonderful people. They uh, they took really good care of us, and you know, on Sundays always had cold cuts and things like that. So Joe and I always filled up our mess kits with with the cold cuts and and sugar and things, and took them home to them. They brought us coffee in bed every morning that we were there when we had, had that, and they were just just wonderful people. Did you leave England at any point? I, uh, we were there for, let's see, we went there in March, and I went to, in the marshalling area. 
I think on the oh, I'm not sure just what date it was, but very close to to uh, D-Day, and we went on uh, LCVPs, which is landing craft vehicle yeah. personnel, uh, which were pretty darn small to be out in that water, and we went across and went uh, took part on the Normandy invasion. I landed near Saint Mary Glees which is St. Mary's Church, okay. Omaha Red. I was in detached service with the 6th Engineer Special Brigade. Somewhere. This is my patch from, okay. from that. We'll photograph that separately. And that's a what European, is, what European is this? theater. European theater? Yeah. And okay. And this one here is your. That's the 6th Engineer Special Brigade. <coughs> so, uh, you, so you. So you landed? Okay. We went, we went in there on D Day or, or. Not in the first wave or anything like that. Mm -hmm. There was quite a bit after that. But. Uh, the, the engineers were the ones that built this, the thing to the, well, the, where they could bring ships in anyway. Sure. I, I'm, the docking area. Yeah. Okay. And we had to clean up the beach and carry lots of dead bodies and so forth. Uh, people up on the hills. Uh, shooting down at us, and 88's coming across there, and they made an awful noise. I remember one time I heard one coming, and, and I dove in a little foxhole, and it hit a, a barrage balloon that they had hanging there, which is, it flamed up, you know, made it pretty hot. And I got some shrapnel landing alongside me in the, in the hole, but it didn't hit me. But uh, I was only in there a very short time, and I got, we, we moved in land a ways, and I got sick. And I, I couldn't even dig my foxhole. I had to have the guys help me. And the next day they took me to a, a battalion aid station, and it was out in an or, apple orchard. And the maddest I'd ever been in my life, I think, <laughs> was I was on a litter on a couple of boxes, and a sniper cut loose, and everybody dug in, and dived in their hot foxholes, and I'm sitting there. I wasn't so scared of I was mad, I guess. <laughs> anyway, uh, they sent me back to the company, and I, uh, I was there. And the next day they came and, and got me again, and they took me, and then uh, the next, we had a landing strip by that time. And uh, I was on a litter in, in a plane and back to England. So I went to, uh, I don't know, someplace uh, for a day or two and then it was shipped to, and I, I, I'm always sorry that I was so young and, and naive and, and didn't pay too much attention to what was going on, but I was in a, a hospital unit, which was a bunch of barracks actually, uh, just in the Wales, and I can't tell you where, what the name of the town was even. I, I've been trying to think about that as long as I was going to do this, hmm. what, what I could, and I, I was, got leave and went into town one hmm. time, I guess. I, I was trying to think about this. When I lived in, in before I went in the service, I lived in Rochester, and uh, my friend Ben Sternberg owned a, a place there, and I learned how to shoot snooker. The snooker is, a, is an English game with a great big table and, and different than, than pool, but I learned how, and it cost me money to learn how, but I learned. Hmm. And 
it must have been there that I ran into the two young fellows and got to be, you know, they were English boys mm -hmm. or Welsh or whatever they were. And, but uh, they wanted to play snooker and I just wiped them out. They couldn't believe <laughs> what I was at that time. But uh, I remember, I don't know if it was one of these kids or somebody else that was there. He had looked awfully young and somebody was giving him a bad time and he ripped his shirt open and he said, damn it, he says, I've been there and done that. He lived, had stitches all the way through it. It's a wonder he was alive. I think he had been to Dunkirk. Mm. Just a young, young man. But uh, it was fantastic. Did you have to go back from England then? Okay, I... I was in the, the hospital there and on the 22nd of, of May, I got word that my brother had been shot down. Didn't have any details, and a couple of days later, I found out the detail that he had been killed. He was shot down over Berlin while I was in the marshalling area before we went for the invasion, I guess. Mm -hmm. So that made me feel pretty tough. You know, I was only 18 years old, or 19, somewhere in there. And my poor mother sitting back here with six of her sons in the service at one time. And I, I didn't tell you maybe, but I, like I said, I was the youngest of eight boys and my dad died when I was seven years old, so I never really knew him. Mm -hmm. My mother had a third grade education. Uh, so things well, weren't all that great. When now, I how long did you stay in England and where'd you go well, next? Okay, um, <coughs> finally, in August, they said we were going to move, and we got on a train and went up to Inverness or Glasgow and got on the Queen Elizabeth. Here's another thing that one of my claims to fame. I wished we got a mimeograph sheet after we'd been on there for almost a week. It said that it was, these were either hospital patients or Air Force boys on rotation going home. And it's, this sheet said, no one will be deprived of any leave time because of waiting for me, signed Winston Churchill. This was on the Queen Elizabeth. And we had to come in convoy because he was on board, otherwise it was fast enough that it didn't go in convoy. So we brought Winston Churchill over to Halifax, Nova Scotia, to meet with Roosevelt. And then I went on down to New York and to Halloran General Hospital on Staten Island. <clears throat> no, I, I was there for quite a while, and I don't even remember going on the Staten Island Ferry. I know we went back and forth to New York mm. or, or several times. I ran into the darndest guy you ever saw. His name was Phil Bolanis from, from uh, Baltimore. And he and I got together and we had a, quite a time. He said, I can promote a snowball in hell. And uh, he showed me that he could. <laughs> he, he was fantastic. So what, what, did you go any place after you left New York? No, we went to, uh, we were supposed to be shipped close to home as soon as possible, but it was one of those uh, falls where they had hurricanes and they had to evacuate England General Hospital in Atlantic City and they brought them up there so they couldn't, didn't have, anyway, uh, so I stayed in, uh, in uh, Staten Island for a while and then they finally flew us down to Schick General Hospital at Clinton, Iowa. And I was at ambulatory, of course, and everything, but I had two brothers that lived, uh, were working, both of them had been in the service and out. They were working for... Uh, well, did you, ever, did you ever go back to 
the to the European theater, or did you? Oh no, to no, no. I was the, the, I had rheumatic fever. Okay, so that was how, how much time did you spend at at uh, Saint? What did you say, Normandy or? At Normandy. Yeah. Oh, I I was only in there <clears throat> for two weeks or less, I guess. Oh, okay. Because yeah. I got sick right away. What was the job besides? Were you constructing, making uh, docks and things, or? No, actually, we were uh, the service company attached to the the uh, outfit. I don't know what we were doing. We were cleaning up the beach and okay and things like that. Mostly. I'm surprised they didn't clean the beach up before you got there. I guess. No, no, <laughs> we were in, we were there while they were still bodies there. Yeah. I mean, we went in with the invasion. Wow. Did, this, did you have a problem with snipers then when you were trying to clean Oh, yeah. Up? Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, airplanes. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, airplanes uh, well, first, strafing. First few days, anyway, yeah. or yeah. nights. And, yeah. And, of course, uh, well, during the invasion, uh, I'm not sure. I, I, I always thought it was the, the uh, British Rodney and the, and the what I, the, hmm. the, and the Texas. I'm not <coughs> sure that we're throwing stuff in, you know, shooting in to, to where we were. But I, I'm not sure which which. Uh, so you 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 were lucky then to get through that. Very lucky. I I. Yeah. I Considered myself a very, very fortunate person. What what year did you get uh, discharged then? Well, I uh, that was in forty four. Uh, let's see. The was it the invasion was forty four in, in June, and I was dis discharged in November of forty four. Okay. Uh, came back to. Minneapolis, went to the university with my brother was, uh, like I say, he, he had been a corpsman with the Marines, had gone into Bougainville on their invasion there. And, and he had always worked in, in drug stores and uh, with drug companies. Mm -hmm. And so he went and finished up his, uh, his pharmacy degree at, at the university while I, we were both there at the same time. That's the first time I ever really got to know my brother. Did he talk about his experiences to you at all? Not, not too okay. much. He, okay. he was uh, there and he was down in, in New Zealand and he, he really loved it down there. And where was your hometown again? Lake Crystal, Minnesota. Lake Crystal, just, Minnesota. Just down by Mankato. I, I went to elementary school in Lake Crystal and through elementary school and then I moved to St. Clair which is 12 miles the other yeah. side of Mankato. I uh, went through high school there except one year out uh, to Waterville when I was a freshman in high school I went to Waterville. Wow. Well just to be have been a part of that uh, terrible era uh, is something special. And that's why we're taping this, because the young people don't understand. Right. And it's important for them to learn from somebody else's experiences. I, I got a couple other sure. good, good things I want to tell you about. Sure. I told you I was in, in St. Louis in 43 and yeah. I got shipped out. Well, in, in 1987, I lived down near Walker on Cabacona Lake. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the twins caravan came through, I happened to go. That's the only one I've ever been to. And Randy Bush, who was used to be a, a right fielder and a, and a great pinch hitter for the Twins, was there. And I got talking to Randy, and I said, "You know, Randy, I uh, I've got a pretty good reputation for winning pennants." I said, "In 1943, I was in St. Louis and won the pennant. In 1950, I was in, working in Philadelphia, and we win the pennant." In 1951, I worked in Westchester County, New York, and we win the pennant, the Giants win the pennant. And uh, he said, boy, 
we ought to get you down to New Minneapolis. I said, oh, that's close enough. I think we could do it. They had gone from worst to first that year and won the, won the credit in the World Series. <laughs> so I always took credit for... I think I'm going to have you buy my lottery ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't done too good on those. Uh, you're right.